thank you very much for coming to Chicago for joining us at USA Trade Tasting. So I'm going to talk about you know how to sell in this market, and that's really uh, the question that we are often asked. You know, we normally touch base with 10,000 suppliers every year between our competitions and trade shows, and this is really uh, going to be more of a practical talk and based on my personal experience. So just a little context, I myself had private label brands. I currently also have a gin brand in London, for London, so I know, you know where you're coming from. I've, I have done cold calling for like five years, retail to retail, in 28 states. I worked with distributors. I was a wholesaler in New Jersey and Delaware as well. So this is going to be really street sort of actions uh, which you will be able to apply you know, uh, when you're approaching and meeting your importers and distributors. So let's get right into it. All right, so I think uh, one of the things which I really uh, did and would advise companies is to think that they are in a sales business. Uh, you know, you, you have to understand that we, making wine is art, but selling wine is sales, right? So we have to have that DNA and culture in our company. You have to understand how the retailer operates, which is purely on the movement and case goods, right? Same goes with distributor. You know, they can, their fundamental focus is goods out, at the fastest rate they can, and the profit contribution per goods. And that's where the misalignment happens with the winery, distillery, and brewery, when you know, we are not looking at the right metrics which our customer is looking at, which is depletion, goods, and margins, right? So that's what you need to really focus on if you are measuring your business performance. You know, have your internal sales processes and metrics around this sort of metrics, which are similar to your distributors. Find, uh, have a sales process uh, in your company. So what does that mean? Uh, preparation, prospecting, closing, launch, and repeat order purchase. I'll break it down. Uh, preparation means you know, having your distributors get ready, having lead uh, process, having you know, a cold calling process, having spills ready, right? Like your, what's your email spill? What's your phone call spill? What's your 10 objections spill for importers, distributors, retailers? Have everything ready and as good as you would, you know, I, I, Pretty much as good as how importers and distributors would operate, you would be doing similar sort of things. Uh, and then f f focus on the metrics. So what I did was, for example, every uh, my target was two new distributors every month I have to open, right? So reverse engineer the process. That means I have to send 40 to, you know, maybe 45 samples to get two purchase orders and a contracts on board and to get it started. So to send you know, 40 samples, I need like 60, you know, uh, people saying, yeah, send me your samples, I like the pricing, let's talk, sort of thing. So for 60, you need like 160 cold calls, <laughs> you know, right? Now, the question I'm sure you are asking is, where are these distributors these days? You know, we are, we've consolidated, but I'll come uh, to how you can, I'll show you some hacks on how you can find continuous distribution data. But what my point is, ideally the question you would be asking and measuring is how many samples are going out, and then are you closing those samples and ridiculously focusing on, am I getting my two on board every month, right? And that's the loop you need to be in. I assure you that if you follow a sales approach within two years you will be a national brand you know and obviously there are there are there are questions like one of uh, a vendor asked me that okay i have an importer in uh, new york who wants us entire us and maybe i have an importer in michigan who is good in michigan so what do i do whether shall i just give the whole us uh, to this person or michigan but that's part of the navigation so what i would advise is the first two to three years control your destiny uh, in breaking the markets divide and conquer do not give entire uh, country to someone. You know, uh, try to talk them into the process that ultimately, you know, uh, we are building business for you. And we're gonna hand it over to you, the entire country, once I've, I know that we are all aligned, all distributors, your brand, you know, everyone's aligned. But initially in the first two years, try to open yourself, try to have that relation yourself with the distributor. You know, you're going to learn uh, while you navigate that, but, uh, you know, the answer is really think about this more of a sales uh, company and have a set target for yourself with, like, two a month or whatever your, your ambitions are. Uh, get your distribution kit ready. So this is simple. I'm sure you all have that, but this is the dialogue that distributors want to have more. You know, sales sheets, case cards, uh, you know, uh, how you're gonna help them sell into chains, 
how you're going to help them uh, do market work. What's your store tasting policy? You know, what's your sample policy? So I won't go deeper into this, but I'm sure you all understand. But this is what you want to talk more and have, you know, your time and money invested in, rather than any consumer ads or any other detailed emails about your, you know, winemakers or distillers. You know, and I think I heard I was just chatting with uh, Main Street Nancy and also Rachel Lowe, uh, who's one of our speaker, right? She's a sort of a billion dollar buyer. And she said, like, unless you are, your grandfather is not Robert Mandavi, don't even bother going there. So unfortunately, that's, that's what the distributors and uh, importers and retailers want to know is simply, how are you going to help me sell this? And why shall I stock this when, for example, coming back to the value wine, like Yellowtail is six ninety nine, seven ninety nine, right? And if you know you are the same price, everything is same. Think about it. Why would a retailer stack your wine? So you need to really understand with that why and be honest with that why and come up with a solution. And only then you will be able to succeed. Otherwise, you're going to get a sweet no, you know, reply saying, "Yeah, come back next week," and so on. Uh, the pitch. This is really, really important. We don't pay attention, I've noticed here, which is your email, the, the words that you use, three paragraph max, you know, how long, the follow-up email, the conversation which your sales rep is having with the d retailers, the conversation which your sales rep, the distributor sales rep is having with the restaurant, the bartender, you know, the importer, the you should have 10 pitch pitches, elevator pitches ready. So. For example, if you're talking to a bartender, you give them, you know, here's your five minute how you introduce this product, and here are the 10 objections that you may face. Oh, the categories are, I don't have money, and whatever, right? So come up with those 10 objections. Your every uh, customer potential, which is bar, restaurant, retailer, importer, distributor, is gonna have. Don't shy away from that fact. You need to face that as an owner. You need to, yourself, uh, be able to sell. I mean, and, and you will learn, you know, the objections. So work on that pitch, and wh where I'm going with that is you're going to work on the conversions. Why are your samples not getting converted? Get the data. Why is that retailer saying no to you? Come and see me next week, or something like you know I don't know this and that, right? So ask them. Okay, just for my learning, I know that you did not like it. Just give me three reasons why you did not like it. Be honest with me, sir. You know so they'll say maybe the price is high. So at least keep writing. Respect what everyone is telling you, and then. Uh, Maybe try. You know what? The best thing is next door. Try. Okay, it's it's. You know, I'm going to give you a little deal and see how the reaction happens. And and that's a reality. Maybe. Uh, this is a nice growth hack. I think uh, I did a little webinar with some of the people, so maybe a couple of people know already this. But uh, getting retail influencers is one of the best street hacks you can do. So what I did was, for example, on East Coast in New Jersey, there is a chain called Buy Right. Let's say Cipriani Wall Street is a fine restaurant in uh, New York City. Uh, Total Wine, I'm sure we all know, uh, Burke Beverage, Chicago, Miller House. So I used each of these accounts as a strategic play to grow my distribution. For example, Total Wine, we had a winery direct program. The goal was not to make money, but to, to put my wine in everyone's mouth. So that's where the highest amount of volume happens, right? You, give, you make less money, but boom, look at the volumes, right? What, what actually I was doing was Total Wine was building my consumers. You get it? So when you have, in that area, a 50K stack of your product in total wine, literally that whole suburb, uh, if someone was drinking Yellowtail, mine was Australian wine, so I'm referring that again and again, you know, will be switched to my wine in that area. So I was using that angle to just do store tastings, but total wine was doing the hand selling in their winery direct program, got it? Uh, then comes Cipriani Wall Street. It's a fine restaurant, mine was 6.99 value wine, so I can always go in any restaurant and say, hey, this is a quality wine. Cipriani has it in their wine list or it's a house pour. So you, you, I was using that as my quality objection, right? So have a strategic uh, uh, retail or distributor partner, Burke Beverage. Kevin Burke, I don't know, I'm sure you guys know, maybe, I don't even know whether he's in business right now, but this is like, Six years ago, he was the guy, right? Miller, Burke Beverage. Like if he says, take Sid's wine, 80 Miller distributors would take it. So he was the guy. Like I, I wanted to make sure I win his heart. And that's how Miller, beer guys work, right? Handshake, win their heart. So I was one of the, I was the first wine at that time in beer distribution network. Imagine the hack sort of I did, right? At that time they were opening up craft and beer uh, wines 
and I cracked that route. But why I'm telling you that is if you win uh, hearts of this influence, like he was 75 year old, but the moment he liked me, he called 80 Miller distributors of Midwest and told me, Sid, pitch, right? So wow, I was in like, you know, all this Midwest accounts. The key here is find out these guys, right? Who are this, this influencer, old man or woman, you know, where, where, you know, people will just listen that you got to take this. And beer guys are fun because, you know, they believe in, in collective, if everyone sells this product, we all win. So it's actually a good way to, I would advise to work with more beer distributors, to be honest. Uh, then similar, like buy right, like, I mean, a lot of uh, stores here in Midwest uh, and East Coast are like immigrant owned stores. So you got to find out who actually is the buyer instead of just wasting time there. And there are a lot of deals and group buys happening. They're they are as big as Total Wine, to be honest. It's just in a different way they operate, right? So uh, they, are, they are also a billion dollar buyer. If, you know, 40 accounts each doing 20, 30 million. Joe Canals is now bought by, you know, I think I, I told one of the guys is now owned by Indians. So you need to work out how they buy and figure out uh, where they hang out. Like there, there is one restaurant in Edison called Rasoy that every liquor store owner is there. So you find, you put your house poor there and then you start reverse engineering, right? So figure out how this whole thing works, but use each of this as a strategic play to grow your distribution. Uh, I already touched on this, build your network. So we, as we know that we have been consolidating, so there is Southern, RNDC, uh, then there are comp great companies like Maverick Wine and, you know, like mid-sized distribution houses. And then there is uh, Miller and, you know, Budweiser network. So pick a network and try to build your reputation within the network. If you try to go with Southern and then Maverick and then maybe, you know, here Budweiser and there Miller and da da da, ultimately, you know, uh, what will happen is the moment you start having conversations with chains, you're going to get a backfire. Like, you know, uh, they would want one network. You know, so from day one, try to select and penetrate and work with one group. You know, it can be Southern or RNDC, which personally uh, will be tough for you to crack because obviously they have so much, you know, you know so uh, again, but if it's medium-sized distributors, like boutique distributors, stick to that as a group. You know, because let's say Palm Bay, uh, as a national importer, would have that group. So then ultimately you will hand over your business to some importer, fine importer, who would have are working relationships with this kind of network. But it's going to be, in year three, you will realize, oh, I wish I thought about this approach. Uh, sending samples to your trade. So uh, what, uh, this is super important. I think what I did was, you know, I always send extra bottles. And I was a wholesaler, as I said, I know how these things work, right? So on Friday, usually they would be doing tastings. They'll pick the bottles out. And then you just, you know, they're just talking and chit-chatting and they're, reviewing your wines. So what you really want to do is in your box, include price sheet in the box, okay? Not just wine, including the price sheet, price sheet in that, a letter saying, dear John, thank you so much for tasting. Please find enclosed price list, shelf talkers, uh, 12 bottles of this, pick up location, and one sheet that's really, the title is how we are going to help you sell. Literally use that title, I mean. You know, that, that shows that you mean business, you know business. And write in bullet points those 10 things and put everything in the box. So John doesn't have to go out and look at, you know, your who sent me this, let me see where is the pricing, what it is, and so on. It's so convenient. You have already won between those 10 suppliers who have not done this, right? So imagine the convenience you're giving to that person as soon as they open the box. Everything is in the box nicely laid out when they're evaluating. And send extra bottles because what happens is if a couple of decision makers are not there, Monday they will come and they'll ask, hey, how was this wine, this and that. So at least your group, the, the sales reps can say, you know, uh, I liked it. You know, here a couple of bottles are left. You can re-evaluate. They don't have to ask you again that can you send me samples or uh, make a make a decision whether, uh, you know, they're not sure. So either you can go this way or that way, but you rather have extra bottles sitting there for someone who could not make the Friday meeting, right? So always throw in extra. I would advise you to use at least six bottles for one SKU, even if it's, you know, whatever expensive wine, but have six minimum per one SKU or spirits. Same thing, you know. Don't be stingy. 
especially if you're sending samples to distributors in the first go. If you have four products, send two mixed cases. This is so important, the first impression of you showing that sample, 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 like, don't get me wrong here, but for example, when, when our exhibitors ask us, right, like, how many bottles shall I bring? Uh, I mean, okay, four or five, and okay, one more you're gonna take or what? Like, just, it's okay to just bring two more and throw it if you have to, if I was in sales, you know? Why would you want to be so micromanaging, right? I understand that you have budgets and you would have everything, but this is the best place to throw money at, you know? Uh, like, literally have uh, no other things, like do nothing else, don't do even trade show, but give uh, more samples out there. That's, that's your language. This is, that's the language of our trade. Uh, Self-distribution, back distribution is an option. So uh, there are companies like MHW, uh, Park Street, right? So I think uh, where I was going with is the answer is in and. So you tried finding an importer, you're not getting an importer. You got an importer, they're not doing anything. You got a distributor, they're doing in one state, maybe in some states they're not doing. You know, so do everything. What I did was I did everything. So in New Jersey uh, and Delaware, I was directly involved with the retail. MHW was clearing in New Jersey, for example, in Delaware. It was my sort of cousins, right? And then uh, in other states, I had MHW sending to uh, you know other states, and then in some, I had some importer taking care of that region. So do everything, because ultimately, you know, uh, your goal eventually is volume and penetrating the U.S. market. So really, it's not the or game; it is actually the and game. So the more you understand how to play the the and game, meaning how are you going to do self-distribution, how are you going to have this importer in West Coast and East Coast, and how are you going to control two of the prime states yourself, like New York or whatever it is, California, but do three things together. That, it's not as hard as it sounds, it's just hard work, to be honest, of you actually doing it. You know, so the, I, I truly believe that the more you're out on the streets, automatically sales happen, literally. You know, so personally I've taken an oath, like I'm going to meet 1,000 people and do interviews with 1,000 people. So same, come up with some theory, you're gonna meet 1,000 retailers and handshake, automatically you will see business happening. Uh, depletion, right? So that's the language which, as I said, we need to understand. You need to know how your brand is performing at retail and at distributors. So ask for depletion reports. I'm, we all know, right, depletion reports and depletion. So uh, if, if not, depletion means uh, sell through from retail to the consumer. This is so important. Uh, this is the reality, right? If this works, everything works. And we also get paid. And we all know how that happens, right? Like, okay, if a purchase order is coming, that means the check is also on the way. It's all correlated from a distributor, you know? So I know when the, when the check's coming, after two days, a PO is coming, you know? So we all know uh, the game is really depletion. So we gotta make sure that the product sells, and unfortunately or fortunately, it's like, it's our job. It's the owner, it's the winery, it's, it's we, because it's our product. For them, they have a choice, you know, they don't, they can move on. Have a winning skew to open the doors, get paid, and build reputation. So this was, again, a strategic uh, play. I'm talking you know, uh, in the perspective of uh, brand owners here. Have a door, have, have, divide your uh, three products or categories in a door opener, like which people can just not say no to you, for example, right? Like I had, a, at that time, I had a 399 Malbec Moscato. I just made up to open doors, to knock chains, literally. Because sweet wines were hot, Moscato was hot, and 399, 499, like how can someone say no to this? So come up with something where absolutely, you know, you're gonna get more meetings with small chains or retailers, right? And then uh, have a 699, 799, or something which is like a volume play, where cash flow, guarantee, you're moving, and that's where you're gonna start building a reputation, and then you go and, Cross sell. So, just for for some of you, for example, let's say you just don't have any cheap wine and you have fifteen dollar wine. It's okay, but build one product first and make yourself a name. That the the key here is they should all say that this guy's wine is moving or this girl's wine moves. That that's what matters, and the word goes out very fast. 
You know, the moment you win in that reputation that whatever Sid is going to bring moves, I can trust, uh, that's the game we are in. The moment you win that game, they will welcome you with hearts, literally. Like, put whatever, do whatever you want, you know? Uh, so I think aim for that. And design, like, I had some brands, like, 150% margins, 100% margins, just because you need margins. And then, then some were, like, 20%. And we all know this is, like, same product I was selling at $7.99, and other was $11.99 on a white, nice, thick label, right? We all know, uh, I mean, the reality, we can play with this. You can come up with an expensive label, you can come up with a little cheaper label, but design a portfolio again with a business plan. Why this is important is if you want long, true business, like 20 years, 30 years at least, you need a portfolio, you need cash machines, you need profit machines, you need something for the chain, you need three or four at least in the game. Otherwise, you know, as, as our uh, you know, data speakers say, trends come and go, this is a insurance against trends. Are you working with the reps? So I think uh, one of the most important conversation that happens is between a sales rep and the retailer. That five minutes, to be honest, is uh, whether you're gonna succeed or not. That Monday morning in that state, the first Monday when every sales rep is gonna put your wine in the bag is so important and that five minutes when he or she is you know, pitching uh, the product, the moment they understand it's gone, the opportunity is gone, it's gone. It, it's so hard to convince a distributor, hey, can I, can you, can your guys take again? It's so hard, you know. It's, so please make sure that first time you are physically there in that market, uh, winning the hearts of distributors, the owners, the sales reps, and the best way to win everyone's heart is help them sell go and sell, with respecting them, right? Like, hey, I'm in your market, I'm meeting these people, but help them sell, people will start loving you. That sales rep will get commission, he will start loving you. Distributors know that every time Sid comes, I'm gonna move four pallets, you know? So th they keep on welcoming you. So that's the reality. I mean, you, you gotta uh, help them sell, at least in the first purchase order, to win the heart. Customize merchandising for each account, right? I, I mean, use this kind of spiels. You know, I always did that, that hey, uh, if I'm in Festival Foods, uh, you know that they, they like their signage, for example. So you, you tell them that we have a, mer I mean, you can, you can say, even if I was small, I would say we had a merchandising department. So you can say we have a merchandising department, we'll be customized, we take care of the cost, we do whatever you want, you know? So give them this flexibility of you taking care of, because they don't want artworks and prints and going to, especially the small guys, independents, don't want to go to Kinko's or Staples, they don't have anything. So you customize for them that, okay, you know, for your store, I can do whatever you want, right? So use merchandising to close accounts as well. Uh, I'll just penetrate uh, in this depletion. So now, all right, great, you know, the, goal, the, the, uh, the question is, let's say, You've done a little bit of this and that, but now the year two comes, right? How are you going to grow and capitalize, going to grow your account's uh, sales volume? So you can do market work. That's number one. Uh, In-store tastings, obviously, right? So Friday, Saturday, th this is the best investments you can do. So uh, what I uh, used this spiel for a mixed case was e every, any account that I go, I just say, you know, buy one case. I'll come Friday and make sure I move the case, literally. Who would say no to you? I'm selling them at $4.99, they're selling, retailing at $8.99, and I'm telling, give me one mixed case, one chance, I'll come Friday and move it for you. It's a guarantee, like, I mean, the good thing about US is like, it's, it's still the hustle and they respect that, right? Like, if you, if you purely just talk about that, I'll come here, make sure it sells for you. They'll say, all right, let me give this guy a chance. You know, and then you go to do that, and then by the time I'm going out, I'll say, can we do one more next time? just one more time so, so we have more consumers and then I do that again and then I say, can I get a 3K stack? And I come Friday and Saturday and make sure I blow this out. And then I go again and then I say, can I get a 25K stack? And I have one uh, person hired managing that account, right? Increase the prices but offer the services. You may be thinking maybe I don't have margin but add margins, let the consumers pay a dollar more but uh, build the brand this way. Go back in the store, and do the, you know, tastings. Tastings in your pitch are the best way retailers will not say no. Like, just, like, just give me one chance, 
I'll come Friday and make sure it blows out. And then obviously you've got to sell on that Friday. You just can't stand and, right? So uh, house poor, uh, same thing. You know, you can use, use uh, that give me sort of uh, one chance and I'll, I'll bring foot traffic to you, right? Okay, this restaurant has my wine, but make sure you are helping them drive new traffic. So you can use this kind of, uh, what they want is new traffic and blow out, right? I mean, sell throughs. So use that and, and put your energy and dollars to make sure that activity is happening. A new account incentives, sales reps incentives, depletion rate incentives, store signages. Uh, for example, everyone who gave me a 25K stack and where I gave like five cases on 25, we all know the deals. I also asked for refrigeration space, a window decals. You know, so ask. Like if you're selling 10K or 25K, why not ask, hey, you know what? You know, while I've got you at the front or maybe front display at that, the moment the door opens, that is the spot you want, especially. So ask that, like, can I get this? I'll come Friday, Saturday. Can I get that window? I'll come Friday, Saturday. So keep on asking and build that store and same formula, then you apply, you know, and roll it out to all your accounts, basically. Regional and national chains. Customers, I mean, distributors, I'm sure, uh, love if someone gets them a chain, right? Especially if they're not working in that chain and if you give them a nice chain account, that's the best thing that you can do. Uh, the churn from the competitor. So this, this was my favorite, and I'll, I'll tell you really a story behind this. So 100K yellow uh, tail was there, Jacob's Creek and Lindemann Penguin. I mean, these are the days, you know, were that value wine days, where Lindemann, Jacob's Creek, and Yellowtail was the category of US. And I come with my wine, same, 6.99, 7.99. So uh, this retailers, I gave them incentive, $100 Amex card or Visa card, you sell my things, I give you this, right? Uh, I don't know legally which state what, but <laughs> you figure that out. But uh, the, the key is you got to tell the retailer to hand sell and churn. So what every time what happened is they kept a couple of bottles at the counter, which I told them to, and then this is what happened. They kept a couple. Someone came with shopping cart in yellow tails there. Hey, uh, Mary, you've seen this wine? You know, try this this time. Yellow tails out. My wine's in the cart. At the counter, couple of wines, incentive. And also, you don't have to pay. Retailers making more money in your wine, let's say, they would hand sell and turn yellowtail, right? I'm just throwing an example here as one brand. But keep some of your merchandising. If you can convince a retailer to churn your direct competitor, if it's that direct, like, you know, if you're absolutely following to take that space, this is a good way uh, to use retailer to sort of churn the customer. Are you following? Yeah. Uh, front door case tag. You know, uh, the restaurant tastings, dry retail. So what I also did was, literally, this retailer said, no, I said, okay, you know, how about I get you some pre-order sheets? Would you take a couple of wines? So in Oklahoma, what we did was, you know, we did restaurant tastings, we had winemaker, and then we uh, called consumers, and then we said, okay, uh, if XYZ store stacks it, you know, would you buy it? So can you give me a pre-order, one bottle, where you live, your phone number? And I gave him 10 uh, customers. Here's a proof buy those two cases, right? So what happens there? Literally, I help the distributor because he's gonna increase the pallet order for my first purchase order, and the new retail accounts were there. So use uh, restaurant tastings. Uh, even if your brand is not there, can I just come and do a small event here, right? To uh, build the consumer, because retailer, I know that even for one consumer, if they ask that, hey, is uh, XYZ uh, available in your store? They start looking, they start thinking, they start calling. That is the question which I was fighting every day, that I want someone to go in that store and strategically let me see. I used to actually put inquiries also on the retailer's website. Do you have Friday Monkey Wine available? You know, so that they saw some inquiries are coming, right? So these are all like, like growth hacks you can do. Uh, but, and that's, that's, uh, that's how you gotta roll. Uh, now, other, couple of other hacks for people who are uh, looking for distribution. How are we going with the time? I don't know. So uh, for distributors, how are we going to find distributors? So I'm sure some of you may be doing, but what, what worked the best was, let's say your competitor or some of the product that you think you're similar with, you know, 14.99 wine if you're selling some, some nice 14.99 import, you find out, you know, who's distributing that, and then you open the distributor's website, and then that distributor, you will see other portfolios of other brands, and then you go to that winery's website, 
let's say a New Zealand wineries website, and then you see their importer and distributor page, you see more distributors. Are you getting it? Right? <laughs> so so you, uh, that's, that's a loop. And then the moment you go inside, you discover, and you keep on discovering, and you keep on building your list. That's just one way. And that's the right distributors you will get because they are active paying distributors. So that's the best distributor. Rest of the data is not really great. Then obviously we have this new, th new uh, all the social media, Instagram, LinkedIn, and all that stuff is great. Uh, TTB, so if you Google uh, the name of the owner and the distributor and TTB in Google, you will find ex Excel sheets. Have you guys seen that? Those kind of things, licenses, right? So name and licenses come, and then you search for the business name. So, so what you want to know is new licenses. You know, people who are building new portfolios, and in ABC and TTB's websites, uh, you will be able to find the names. You won't find emails and uh, any other details, but you find the names and then you dig deeper. So maybe in your office uh, admin, you can just give this, outsource this kind of thing, like building list uh, that you've got to do 200 new data in this. Just outsource to your office, whoever's doing, like, ha can have the capability to do this kind of mechanical work. Uh, so I will end with last couple is be the most likable brand to your importer, to your distributor, to your sales reps, to your retailer, to the end consumers, and think beyond 1,000 cases. Rest of the things, trust me, is easy. Money you will make. It's a very lucrative and best market. We've seen it again and again. Dollars high, markets hot again. This country has proved again and again, right? So uh, China especially, arbitrage is gone. So again, the world is coming back here. So invest in US market. It takes two to three years. But the moment you become a likable brand and a supplier, that reputation, it, the opportunities are huge. You know, it's huge. The upside is huge. So first aim for, you know, even if it's break even, become a likable supplier. And that means sell, sell, prove. Mm -hmm.